A lot of us develop special bonds with the people we trust to cut our hair. Some of those relationships go back years, maybe even decades. I sat down with one Forsyth County man who says he owes his life to the woman who cuts his hair. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Every two weeks, like clockwork, you'll find Larry Frazier here getting his hair cut by Robin Anderson. It's been part of his routine for nearly 40 years. I would have to consider Robin to be one of my very closest friends. And last fall, that routine and this friendship may have saved his life. The fact is, this could have been catastrophic because if it had gone ignored, it would have just gotten worse. You see, during these haircuts, Larry exposes part of his back just like this so Robin can shave his neck and shoulder blades. In September, while doing that, she noticed one of the moles on his back looked different. Yeah, that scar's healing nicely. She urged him to see a doctor, but... So he didn't go get it looked at, and then the next time he came back and I said it to him again, and then I think I got kind of stern the third time, um, like, yeah, maybe I won't cut your hair if you don't go get it looked at. It was a little more than that, says Larry. It was that one hit that almost dislocated my right shoulder. That was the one that got my attention. You'll like him. But it worked. This is a picture of the pigmentation Robin thought was a mole. His dermatologist ordered a biopsy. When pathology came back, they called, and they immediately said, Larry, it's melanoma. We need to deal with it right away. And that's when everything went into motion. A serious and potentially deadly diagnosis. Within a week, Larry had surgery, and this was the result. Surgeons also removed three lymph nodes to determine whether it spread. It wasn't what I expected, to be honest. I mean, to look at it, uh, when you figure out how small it was to begin with, to what it ended up looking like in the end, was, was a shock to me. Fortunately, they caught the melanoma early and Larry is considered cancer free. Yeah, it makes me feel good that he's still around to agitate his wife and his kids. <laughs> and me too, when he comes and gets a haircut. A happy ending, thanks to his doctors and his good friend and barber, Robin. It's unfortunate because now I have to listen to it the rest of my life, I'm sure, how she we'll saved my life, Keaton. but she did. Bye. Be sweet. Have a good day. Stay out of trouble. Now, Larry told me he spent a lot of time in his 20s, 30s, and 40s outside in the sun fishing and boating, and he didn't wear a shirt or sunblock. He says he just didn't know any better. Dr. Deborah Durrell, a dermatologist with Novant Health, says about 90% of melanomas are caused by UV exposure over time. 10% is family history. So we asked her about the warning signs, and she said, first, pay attention to all those moles. If they change color or shape, appear red, blue, or gray, or have a jagged or irregular border, those are red flags. Another thing to watch for, pain or bleeding. She told me anyone can get melanoma, but people with fair skin and light eyes are at higher risk. And here's what else she said. If you've had more than five blistering sunburns before, I think it's age 20, um, that actually increases your risk of about 80% of melanoma. So a lot of it is sun care and skin care when you're younger. Um, and then if you have more than 50 moles, you're at higher risk of melanoma. If you have moles that are irregular or atypical, or you've been told by a dermatologist that they're dysplastic, that gives you a higher risk of melanoma as well. And then lastly, if you have any family members who've had melanoma, that increases your risk too. Now, Dr. Durrell says the best way to protect yourself is to wear sunscreen, at least 30 SPF, especially between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., or even better, Wear a wide brim hat and lightweight long sleeve sun shirts. A lot of great information there. Thanks, Katie.